and this is why the Eagles sent um, Jalen Hurts to uh, Tom House and Adam Daydew. That's what they did with Carson Wentz coming off his rookie season. And he, he was better mechanically that year. And that was it. Stop doing it. Now, part of it was because of injuries and it was always rehabbing. Um, then COVID happened. And I don't know what Carson did during COVID. I think he just stayed home. And all of a sudden, the mechanics uh, started going backwards again. John McBowen. I would be Jody McDonald. That would make this Mega Mac hanging out on Birds 365, a football Friday. Next hour, we'll get uh, Marcus Hayes from the Philadelphia Inquirer and WIP off the board and talk all things <clears throat> with us. Um, J Mac, when is tight end you supposed to take place? Do you know off the top of your head? Yeah, it's uh, next week. Uh, I don't know the exact dates. I think, uh, what's today's date? Uh, I think it's next Wednesday through Friday. Don't okay. it... Today's 17th. Yeah, I think it's it's next Wednesday. I think it starts. All right. Uh, running the risk of being the angry, cranky old man with the get off my lawn attitude. Uh, I will share with you my thoughts on tight end you, but I want to get yours first. What do you think of uh, some of the best tight ends in the National Football League getting together, working out, uh, sharing uh, beliefs and 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 uh, things that make them good? Uh, what are your thoughts on it other than it's a good photo op and you get to expand your brand when you get things like this, because believe me when I tell you, there will be many a media outlet down there to cover it. Um, I, I, I think I know where you're going, but I, I don't think there's that much opportunity um, over three days to do that much. I, I do think it's tight end university is not the first, um, you know, really. And I think, what started it all was Von Miller's pass rushing camp. Um, and then came Lane Johnson's uh, offensive line masterminds, tight end university. There's some other ones. Those are probably the most famous ones. Um, and they all came out of, um, you know, partially the off season because you got to work in the off season. Now you're left to your own devices. So, the good players understand they have to figure out ways to get better on their own. So I think from that perspective, it's a really good thing. I do think if you can pick the great brain of Travis Kelsey and George Kittle and Greg Olson and Dallas Goddard is going to be there. That's a good thing. Um, if you're another tight end, you know, the old school mentality of, you know, why are you commiserating with the enemy? I you know, it's it's oh, a different world. Oh, that's where I'm going. Yeah, it's a different world. It's a different world, and every position does it, not just tight ends. So, I mean, either I'm an old school guy too, Jody, but you either adapt or you get left behind. If, if you're sitting on the couch, I always, you know, and I can't. I think there's a whole cocktail of things that led to Carson Wentz's um, uh, descent as a player. I won't say downfall because he's still a starting quarterback, but um, he's not what he once was. I think we could all agree with that. I And most of it, and I think, you know, it's hard to put percentages on things, but I think most of it is related to injuries. No question about it. Um, and it's not only the knee, but the back and the concussion and everything else. Um, but I, I do think people, you know, 2017, and this is why the Eagles sent um, Jalen Hurts to uh, Tom House and Adam Daydew. That's what they did with Carson Wentz coming off his rookie season. And he he was better mechanically that year. And that was it. Stop doing it. Now, part of it was because of injuries and it was always rehabbing. Um, then COVID happened. And I don't know what Carson did during COVID. I think he just stayed home. 
and all of a sudden the mechanics uh, started going backwards again. And it's something you need to, especially when it's not natural for you, you need to keep on top of it. I always thought that was an underreported aspect of his descent. And it's a long way of saying you need to figure out ways to be great if you want to be great in the NFL because you can't do it like you used to be able to do it with your own coaches and your own team. So you got to figure out ways. And once Von Miller opened the door, everybody's like, well, we better, you know, the pass rushers are, are, are getting together, figuring out the tricks of the trade. Lane Johnson's like said, we, we better get together and figure out and, and figure out what's going on. And then tight ends did it and so forth and so on. Quarterbacks are always, there's, there's a certain group of trainers, uh, footwork, there's footwork guys. The footwork king is kind of famous, but um, you have to do it. So I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Here's where my problem comes in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's where my problem comes in. Um, you were trying to draw a comparison with Carson Wentz going to quote unquote quarterback coaches to keep his mechanics together. Get about. I got no issue with that. I got no problem with that. Putting the work in, acknowledging that no one's perfect, even coming off a good year, 2017, like they did in the Super Bowl. Carson may have uh, lightened up on putting extra time in to keep his game at a certain level. Going to a individual coach who is charging and you're going to have to pay to get their expertise. Oh, I get that. That that's should happen. That's something that should be ingrained in every single player. As a group of guys getting together who are already in the league to share secrets among themselves, that makes no sense to me. Your job, your commitment is to the Philadelphia Eagles. If you're a Dallas guy and you're attending that this week, your commitment is to the Eagles. It's not to any other tight end in the league to show off what has made you one of the top five tight ends. John McMullen's opinion, Jody McDonald's opinion, maybe not everybody's opinion, but we think he's a top five tight end. Um, you don't have to go there and show how you got there to the other tight ends who aren't in the top five just yet. That's not your job. You're supposed to keep that information to yourself in-house for the betterment of the Philadelphia Eagles in 2022. Yeah, could he learn a thing or two from Kittle and Kelsey? Yeah, probably. If you're the top banana, and I would make those the top two, it's only downside. You've already achieved your yeah. status. Yeah. You don't have to be sharing the secret sauce with anybody else. No, 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 no. And I get what you said about it's a brave new world, Jody. <coughs> Excuse me there different ways that players relate to each other. This is an old school football where you have to hate the opponent. You want to get together with all the other tight ends and have a barbecue and have some cold ones. Yeah, fine. That's okay. I'm not telling you, oh my, you can't, you have to spit on the opposing tight end anytime you see him. No, that's old school. That's out the window. They all have agents and they're all free agents. So they change teams or whatever the, the 70s mentality of the NFL yeah. no longer exists. No. That I get. But nowhere does it say you must tr exchange trade secrets of your position with someone who's going to go out there and try and beat your football team in the upcoming year. Doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think it's about trade secrets as much as, um, you know, technique and fundamentals. And, you know, I, I think it's, you know, you know, if you're like Dallas Goddard isn't Dallas Goddard because he's, um, you know, perfect with technique and fundamentals. In fact, you know, he drops the ball a little bit too much. Uh, he's got to tighten up on that. Um, he's he's Dallas Goddard because he's 6'5", he's 256, he can run like the wind, he's, he's strong enough to block uh, defensive ends. Uh, he can't teach <laughs> He can't, he can't teach that. Uh, Travis Kelsey can't teach um, his athleticism to be, you know, perhaps the best pass catching tight end of all time. Now, I mean, it's a different era and obviously the numbers are inflated, but numbers wise, he certainly is. Um, same thing with George Kittle, as far as his physicality 
it's more about techniques and fundamentals than, in other words, you know, I, I think it was, if Dallas Goddard's opening up Nick Sirianni's playbook and say, Hey, this is it, you know, that's a problem. Um, I don't think anybody's doing that. It, it's about, it's about getting together and, and trying to stay. And I always remember when Lane started O-line masterminds, he, he said that he, he specifically brought up Bond Miller. He said, well, they're, they're, they're sharing secrets on how they beat us. We better figure out what to do. And it's got it. It's got more to do with that than, than sharing. I, I can't say everybody's not, you know, dumb enough to not share playbooks, but I'm pretty sure um, nobody's sharing proprietary information. I, I'm not even suggesting that someone would do that. And you're probably right. There's probably one guy that, accidentally doesn't even know that he's doing yeah. it and he tips yeah. his hand and gives something away. I'm not even suggesting that, but how you prepare for a season, what your drills are, what you're doing during the off season. Maybe that truly has lifted your game. Maybe someone taught it to you, a coach who you were playing for at the time, high school, college, wherever else. And you have carried that forward and it's helped to make you a better player in the National Football League, it's something you've been doing as you've developed all through, the, through those years. You're not obligated to share that with anybody else on any other team. Keep that no, to but, yourself, you know, young man. That's what made you as good as you are. I, I, I think the only difference is the structure. You know, guys are working out all the time at various performance centers, you know, whether it's Exos, you know, there's a bunch of them in Florida. Um you know, from different teams, they go to specific trainers because they develop a reputation. I mentioned the footwork King. Uh, he's developed a reputation. He's got players working with him from all over the NFL. Um, they do it on a personal level anyway. So to me, it's just the branding and the structure. The branding's better. They sell some t-shirts. Um, you know, same thing with Lane with offensive line masterminds. The branding's better. But this stuff's going on anyway, so I I I don't have as much as a, a problem with it as you know. I I always ask coaches because I probably told you the story when Jordan Mailata was developing, um, and the AAF was still around, the Alliance of American Football. They were trying to, and it was all bull, you know what, bull bleep, but. Um, they were trying to say they wanted to be a developmental arm for the NFL. And I think it was Damo actually who asked Jeff Stoutland about Jordan Mylotta. Would he consider, you know, Hey, more reps. He always says reps are like bars of gold. Stoutland says, uh, you get more reps. And, and he's like, I don't want anybody touching Jordan Mylotta. I, I don't want anybody. I, he built this kid up from ground zero. Truly never played a down of football at any level. Didn't know how to play it, put on his helmet, I always say, uh, from from ground up. And he was like, I don't want it. anybody else touching uh, Jordan Mailata, teaching him bad habits that I'm trying to get out of him or whatever. And I always thought to myself, that makes sense. Uh, but then you have this all over the league. And I constantly I asked Shane Steichen. I asked Nick Sirianni. I asked everybody. And part of it is there's nothing you can do about it. But clearly the Eagles steered Jalen Hurts in a specific direction. And it's, you know, they don't do that often. And and it's usually, obviously, quarterback's the most important position. But, you know, there is something to insert name, Devontae Smith or whoever you want to say. You know, who's he working with in the offseason? That could hurt you. It could help you, but it could hurt you as well, especially when it comes to technique and the coaching staff and what build up you wants you to do. But the coaches are kind of like, well, there's nothing we can do about it. So they kind of default to stay in shape. And, you know, if something develops, if a bad habits develops, well, you got to change it back, do the best you can. There's not much you can do, really. John, if you know, please tell me and our listeners. If you don't, I'm going to ask you to speculate here. 
Jalen Hurts putting in work this offseason with these quarterback gurus out on the West Coast, Tom House and Rod Dado. You said the Eagles probably pushed him in that direction, advised him in that direction. I uh, don't think they could go mandate him in that direction, but uh, they had influence over him. Who do you think's paying their tab? Because they're charging. They're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Somebody's you know, writing a, a check to somebody. Who do you yeah. think's paying? You know, now that you said that, I've never really thought about it before. Um, you know, maybe I'll look into that because there is some, there, there, now in the case of Tom and Adam, they've been doing it for a long time. So, but there is something to, if you're sort of one of these personal tutors to be able to say, Hey, I'm working with Jalen Hurts or I'm working with, um, so-and-so that, that, that elevates your, um, um, sort of your own personal brand in the NFL world. So there is sort of that give and take, but there's certain guys and I would put Tom house in that category who are so entrenched uh, that they're in demand. They get paid. Yeah. I assume they get paid. And I, I would assume uh, if the Eagles uh, steered them in that direction, they were picking up the tap, but I don't know that for a fact. And it's, it's, going to be very hard to find out because the Eagles won't even admit they sent him there because there's all this sensitivity of who Jalen was working with before and you know when I upset him and everything's about politics Jody it's it's ludicrous the only way you're going to find out is on the uh uh house uh, end yeah they will... and Tom will not by the way Tom will not ever tell anyone who and he's working with. So it always has to come from the player. Okay. Always has then, to come from the player. Then maybe Jalen's agent would be willing to uh, give you an off-the-record uh, indication as to who got uh, compensated. Oh, he was working with Tom House. So. <laughs> Understood. Very, but the question I'm very, I asked was. I'm very cop. I don't know who's paying Tom. Who's who's paying for it. Because and it's more Adam Daydew, by the way. Adam Adam Daydew, who used to pitch for the Dodgers. He's, he's the... He's sort of taken over. Tom's getting a little bit older. So Adam does more of the heavy lifting these days. No, uh, whichever one it is, somebody worked with Jalen Hurts. And we'll see if it improved his game, at least according to some, like Don McMullen, who got a chance to see him uh, in the two sessions, less than an hour, hour and 45 minutes of uh, seven on sevens that you got to see. Got about, Uh, yeah, an hour and 45 minutes this spring. It, it, it's a new world, Jody. It's a new world. But some people could tell that Jalen Hurts was throwing the ball significantly better, tighter spirals, more zip on it than there was before in an hour and 45 minutes of workouts that did not include anyone coming after him, trying to make his life a living act by pressuring him. But uh, we can tell that much. I could tell Stationary. this. No, I wasn't even there. If I was there for the hour and 45 minutes, I still don't think I could tell anything. But since I wasn't there, I probably shouldn't be. Uh, I'll, I'll correct you. I'll correct you on one thing. Stationary tackling dummies were bearing down on Jalen Hurts. Bearing Stationary. down. Stationary. Thank, thank you very much for that word picture. Stationary tackling dummies coming after the quarterback. Man, it must have had him just staining his pants. Um, I hope he comes back and has a great season. I like the guy. I like the at Alabama. I like the pick when the Eagles made it. And I am a guy who believes that you can improve your accuracy over time. At some point, you just say, no, it is what it is. But with Jalen Hurts having been, how many games he start? Four at the tail end of yeah. coin trade? All right. So a, and he missed two games last year. So a 19-game starter in the National Football League. I truly believe there's still room for improvement. I think he can become more accurate, and he's going to need to be this year because, for me, that was his biggest downfall last year was inaccuracy throwing the football. I absolutely can believe believe that it can happen. Will it happen? I'm not going to judge you for an hour and 45 minutes of uh, tackling stable. Well, Josh Allen Allen proves it can happen. Um, Doesn't happen often. But you can improve. I mean, everybody improves. Um, 
there's multiple ways to improve. And one of the ways is just more experience and you become more comfortable in the offense and things slow down for you. And this is, you know, the Eagles and Jalen himself make a big deal out of this will be the first time he's in the same offense for two consecutive years since high school. Um, all that stuff is going to help. And then as we talked about with Jared before, A.J. Brown. And all of a I sudden, think. A.J. Brown's out there with Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. And you got a good, in theory, on paper, you got a good safety valve in Kenny Gainwell. Uh, plenty of weapons now. Great offensive line. There's no reason you shouldn't expect improvement from Jalen Hurts. The, the bigger question to me is, is it going to be enough improvement? And that's that's the bigger question. And John McMullen, don't forget the new and improved returning from tight end you, Dallas Goddard, as a <laughs> big part of the Eagles offense this upcoming year, because uh, Kittle and Kelsey will be sharing all their secrets on being uh, phenomenal Pro Bowl level. And tight Greg end. Olson, don't forget Greg. He's retired, but Greg. Is he going to help him with his broadcast capability? Will they get Goddard up to speed for yeah, broadcasting? Greg, I think Greg's doing the Super Bowl this year. Uh, uh, he's going to be the number one guy, the number one analyst, I, I believe. Uh, right. I hope he has a great year because yeah. I think the year after Tom Brady will be sitting in his chair. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Good for Greg Olson that he'll be st he'll be doing but tight great... end you before, much longer than he'll be doing Super Bowl broadcasts for Fox. great timing though because Fox happens to have the Super Bowl the year he's in the 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 number one chair. That's that's great timing. Yeah. Good. Good for him. He's going to be able to tell his grandkids, I call the Super Bowl someday. Uh, but it, By the way, um, we're talking about Patrick Mahomes. I want to give myself, and I want to give Patrick credit, and I want to give myself a pat on the back before we get to break. I'm sure you saw this, uh, he said yesterday, that the second half versus the Bengals, worst playoff football I've ever played. Right. I give him oh. credit. I give him credit for that. Um. He was also bad against Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl, but that was more of his offensive. Body. He lost his offensive tackles. They, they were just uh, they talk were about just being him. being under duress. Yeah. He was as distressed the quarterback yeah. in the Super Bowl as I've seen in a long time. Yeah, but I give him credit for saying that. I always say people say like I, I'll tell you right now. I just said it with Jared, and we all said it. Best quarterback in the NFL, but that doesn't mean he's perfect. And that's no, he was, and I'm he glad. was bad in that second yeah. half. I'm not going to blame the Super Bowl against him. I think you said earlier on the show here he hasn't been getting it done in the playoffs, which is a little bit of an overstatement. He had a bad half. No, I said half. at times in the playoffs, he's had some of the greatest playoff games ever. Right. Uh, 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 at times in the playoffs, he's made very poorly. He's he's played poorly in both Super Bowls except for one quarter, essentially. Um, and then the Cincinnati game, uh, he was a disaster in the second half. Disaster. And I'm glad he said it. That's all. I'm glad he admitted. So now, when freezing cold takes comes to me, I can point to, he said it. Patrick Mahomes said it. Uh, he, he was bad. There's no question about that. He had a chance to win a game against Cincinnati. He didn't do it, plain and simple. But his career stands for what it is. And I call if, him the best quarterback in football. Well, if, if you have play. a Super Bowl that you win and you play well during a period of it, yeah, I'm going to forget everything that happened before. You play lousy in the first half, you come back, you win in the second half. Guess what? The first half didn't really happen. Well, uh, people forget you can play completely lousy as Ben Roethlisberger right. proves, and people forget which, about it. Which Mahomes didn't. He won yeah. the game. Yeah, he, he did. He the put them in a deficit position up until a point, and then he outdid what he had done earlier. So that's a major W for me. But uh, both John McMullen and Patrick Mahomes agree on Patrick Mahomes playing lousy against the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes. Second half, he was great in the first half, which was so weird. He had a phenomenal first half, and then it was the play, the one play, and right he just totally half. lost it. Yeah. yeah. It was unbelievable. He was phenomenal, and then just a disaster. Marcus Hayes from the Philadelphia Inquirer and WIP is going to join us next round out the week here on Birds 365.